Until now, humans have made a lot of space telescopes, and for different purposes, they have been sent to space. The first one is the Hubble Space Telescope, which everybody knows about. And the newest one is going to be the James Webb Space Telescope, and they're planning on sending it to space this year. But in the middle of all these telescopes, one was made for only one job, and the job was to look at the Milky Way and to find planets like Earth where you can live. Until the end of its life, Kepler looked at hundreds of thousands of stars and found thousands of planets. Kepler was launched in 2009, and from day one, it started scanning the Milky Way. When Kepler was sent to space, it had the biggest mirrors in a space telescope ever. For that time, it was giant, but compared to James Webb, it's tiny. For its time, the camera in this telescope was crazy. It had 96 megapixels. In its lifetime, it looked at 530,536 stars. And around the stars, it looked at 2,662 planets. Most of the planets that Kepler looked at were way bigger than Earth. And the distance to the sun was extremely close. And the speed they were spinning around their star was extremely fast. Like for example, our Earth takes 365 days to go one time around the sun. Some of the other planets would do that in days. It also found planets that were orbiting two stars. Like if you were on the surface of that planet, this is the sunset you would see. But one of the cool things that Kepler found was planets in the Goldilocks zone. We said this before, Goldilocks zone is a place where water is in liquid form. One of the planets that Kepler found that made scientists really excited is K218b. Astronomers believe that on this planet, there is liquid water, pretty much like Earth. But one problem is that it's kind of far. The distance between K218b to Earth is 124 light years. And another thing, the star of this planet is not like our sun. It has a red dwarf. From all the planets that Kepler found, the chances of having liquid water is the highest on K218b. This planet was founded by Kepler in 2015, and after Kepler was retired, other telescopes took over its job and studied the planet. Some people ask, how is Kepler seeing 124 light years away? Kepler would look at the stars and lock eyes with them. It would wait for a star to get a little dim. When it got a little dim, it would notice that a planet is passing in front of it. And then it would zoom onto the star. A lot of people ask, how do astronomers look at these planets and find out how they are? Like how do they find out what size it is and what distance it has from its star? They measure all this with the dimming of the star. Like when the planet passes in front of the star, they could analyze most of that. If a telescope really far away from us looks at Earth and the Earth passes in front of the sun, the light of our sun would only dim by 0.008%. This is a really low number and it's extremely hard to see, but the cameras on the Kepler were so good that it would see all of this dimming. In 2014, NASA announced that Kepler has found another planet, and it could be like Earth. Kepler 186f. You should know that Kepler would find these planets and move on and give it to the astronomers to analyze it. And it didn't have time to look at it itself because the lifetime was so short that it could not stay on one planet and analyze it. It had to move on and find more planets and stars. Kepler found 186F in 2014, but just recently, scientists have found out that this planet has seasons. 
And the reason they found that out is that the tilt on this planet is exactly like Earth. And it's been like that for a long time. And this tilt, just like Earth, causes seasons. A lot of planets that Kepler found, it thought it made a mistake. But now, since scientists are looking at all the planets that Kepler found, they see that these are useful planets and are studying it super hard. Like for example, when Kepler found 1649c, it thought it wasn't a good planet in a good place. But just recently, they found out that it's exactly the same size as Earth and it's in the Goldilocks zone. And also, it doesn't have a star like ours. It's orbiting a red dwarf. But the red dwarf has enough heat to give this planet warmth. Astronomers believe that this planet has the same weather as Earth. But it has a small problem. It's kind of far. 300 light years. Kepler in its lifetime did some good thing. It found 2,662 planets, but only 16 of those were in the Goldilocks zone. And most of these 16 planets were locked to their star, so meaning one side is super hot and the other side is freezing. Most of the planets Kepler found were formed with gas, pretty much like Neptune but smaller. Kepler found places where you can actually live, but the useful planets were orbiting red dwarf, and unfortunately we have no clue if the radiation of a red dwarf is bad, good, or anything. Is it even possible to live on a planet that has a red dwarf? Kepler also found planets that are really cool. Planets like Jupiter, but extremely hot. One of those is KOI 5AB. This is a planet like Jupiter, formed with gas, but unlike Jupiter, it's extremely close to its star. This was the second planet that Kepler found. A giant planet like Jupiter that rains fire. At the time, Kepler didn't know but now they found out that this planet orbits two stars. This idea made scientists go crazy. Like how is two stars so close to each other? Kepler found other planets as well that you should know about and they're all being analyzed. This telescope in its short life, which was 9 years, 7 months and 23 days, discovered a lot of cool things, which is still in its first stages. And they're still waiting to study every planet and star that Kepler found. This planet's job was discovering new places, and it did a really good job. From now on, we must study the planets that this thing found. How are we supposed to study the planets it found? With what tools are we gonna go this far and study? With this, the James Webb Space Telescope. And not only is it gonna look at Kepler's discoveries, it's gonna look at the beginning of time and how the first stars were formed. They keep canceling the launch of James Webb Space Telescope because they want to make it perfect. But the latest news says in 7 months, meaning October 2021, this will be sent to space. 